All right, so what we're gonna tie here is the uh, black ghost. We're gonna do it in traditional style. If you've been following along with the classes over at Fly Tying for Beginners. Uh, last week we did the marabou version. This week we're gonna do the traditional version. I don't have one to show you, so we're just gonna tie it. Uh, the hook I'm using is a little bit different than last week. Normally on something like this, I'd use like a TMC times six long, uh, TMC 300 times six long. Uh, I ran out of those hooks. So, uh, but what I do have is a 2220 size four uh, Daiichi, which is uh, times four long. Uh, and I'll show you real quick. The one thing I do like about these streamer hooks, you know, just let me pull one, is that back where the vise grips the hook, it's got a, uh, trying to get one out here. I should have one ready. It's It's got a little flat, they manufacture it to have a little flat bend to it, if you can see that. So it's not completely rounded right here. It's actually got a little flat piece, which sits really nicely in the vise. So anyway, just some food for thought. Let me get these out the way and we'll get going. What I'm using for thread, sorry, my nose is a little stuffy, is UTC 70 black. And let's just get going. I'm gonna start my thread. I'm gonna start my thread a little closer than I normally would. Uh, probably two bodkin widths behind the eye instead of two and a half to three. And once I get my third turn in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I've got my thread completely flat. And with touching turns, because the underbody really matters on this fly. So with touching turns, I'm gonna take my time. There'll be a lot of taking your time wrapping on this fly. Fly is actually pretty easy to tie uh, to create a nice underbody, which in turn creates a nice body. You really need to take your time on this. Sorry again. It's just that time of year where these allergies kick in. And touching turns all the way back. I'm keeping my tag in the same position. Uh, because we're doing a floss body, I don't want to move. I don't want to get anything out of proportion in here. Uh, if you're comfortable with tying in up front in like two or three wraps uh, on your jam knot, you can trim your thread there. Otherwise, uh, for me personally, I like taking the tag all the way to where the tail is going to come into play. If you got to back off a little bit, do that. Make sure that you're constantly looking to make sure you have flat thread. So spin your bobbin around to get those uh, individual strands to open up and not rope together. And we're almost there, I know. It's like, why so long? Because we're trying to tie a nice fly. Nice flies take a little bit of practice. They take a little bit of work and they take a little bit of patience. And once we get to the hook point, we can go ahead and trim. Oops, sorry, I'm just concentrating on my thread. Uh, we can go ahead and trim this out. So now I'm at the hook point. Come in, trim that out. Okay, sweet. Next, what we need is some yellow hackle uh, fibers for the tail. So what I've got here is just a uh, feather that came off of a saddle. One thing you don't want is all this. You can kind of see how this is loose. It's not very stiff. It wants to fold over. That stuff is kind of junk. And I like to get rid of that or at least know where it is so I don't have to deal with it because we don't want that stuff. And so as I pull this out, off the stem, you should have some fibers or some barbules that 
stick straight out to the side. So you can see how these ones curve up. To me, those are still really no good. They, they, they curve too much to tie a nice version of this. All right. All right, so that's, that's pretty good. Next, what I want to do is I want to take about an even amount off of each side. So to do this well, I want to pull the fibers directly off the side of the stem so that all the tips line up. I'm going to pinch those tips. I'm going to pull the feather away. I'm going to reverse the feather. in the same general area and line the pulled part up with the stem and kind of pinch it all together. Uh oh, I had some move on me. Sorry, right, we'll just get rid of those. So that they all line back up when you reverse it the opposite way. Now I'm going to collect all those, pinch and pull. Now you should have a tail that's pretty straight. What you're looking for though is these tips to line up. Don't worry about what's happening on this end as long as this end is lining up well. Get that one that just wants to make hay. Now if they're flared out a little bit you can just kind of lick them like that. And what we want to do is we want to get a distance about half the distance of the hook shank. So I'm pretty close there. Now what do you, same thing with the other tail that we did. When we move and get our distance for our tail, we want our fingers to line up over the hook, uh, not the hook point where the thread is, but the actual barb. So next I'm going to pinch those in place and just do a loose wrap over kind of seat them where I want it and we're going to continue on with our touching turns. Don't pull down on your thread too tight here. It's going to it's going to flare open your tail or it can make it go all wonky. So just evenly distributed turns, flat thread until we get <clears throat> excuse me to the hook point or on to the the bend golly the barb there we go next what we need to do is I'm going to lift this tail up I'm going to put one wrap underneath on the back side and pull directly forward with my thread now I may flare that open a little bit and that's okay you can loose, loosen your tension lick your fingers and pull it all back together this turn underneath that tail is going to help keep this tail propped up. Uh, so that way it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, it stays in the correct position. Next what we want to do is we'll, we want to kind of collect all of the front uh, part of the barbules that came off the stem. And we want to cut these at an angle with the lower fires, fibers preferably being the longer ones. And we want to make this a really nice smooth taper. You can lift these up, move your scissors in, and let them fall down like so until they're sitting on top. Make the cut. And that should give you generally a pretty good taper. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do one wrap directly over the back right next to the tail so that your thread is even at the tail. And now we're gonna wrap forward. When you get to the third wrap, you can start to cinch down. Ooh, don't hit your hook point like I just did. And now we're going to, with touching turns again, wrap this forward. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's like we got a bunch of rain yesterday and just all of a sudden, boom. Nose is clogged. As you're doing this, you want to keep your fibers on top. Don't let them roll. 
Take your time to keep them in position. You see they start to move down. I'm gonna force them back to where they need to be. I'm gonna spin my bobbin to get my thread to open up. You can also, if you're struggling with that, take your bodkin, put it on your thread, gently lift up and pull towards you to flatten your thread out. Granted, that takes a little while and whatever, but we need to make a nice underbody. The further you, uh, also, the further you can get your fibers to roll up, uh, the better. And with something like 70 to near, sorry, my dog's getting ready to go nuts. Uh, it doesn't want to, uh, cover much ground quickly. So the whole object here is to try to keep this at a very smooth light taper all the way back up front to where we started from where we started our thread. Okay. And taking this kind of time on an underbody to build a nice fly is really not uncommon. Uh, if you wanted to do the more fishy version, uh, the marabou is kind of the way to go, and at least in my opinion. Uh, but to get something that you want to give to a friend or mount or, uh, you know, post on Facebook and say, hey, look what I did. You know, this kind of time is what's needed to do that typically. All right, where's the Jeopardy music? Oop, got a little lump there. As you get better at this, you can go much faster. So, if you've already beat me to the front, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing going to the back, except we're gonna add tinsel here up at the eye. We're close to the eye. And then we're gonna go back to the back doing the same thing. All right. Coming in on our landing point. Okay, great. So next, what we got here is I've got silver tinsel. I've got gold on one side. I've got silver on the other. And what we want to do here is we want to take the silver side of the tinsel. If you have total, uh, your tinsel is only silver, not two colored. That's fine. But if you have a two colored tinsel, you want to take the side, whatever side that, uh, that has the color you want to use and place it towards the hook shank. So we want silver to show on the outside. So therefore I want to place silver facing the hook shank when we tie this in. Now I'm going to, sorry, I've got about 10 inches here where the tinsel and I'm going to place two wraps of it. And I want to get that so that it's directly on the side of my hook shank. So it's kind of hidden like so. Then what I'm going to do is I'll put a third wrap in and I'm going to gently pull. If you can see that or not, I'm going to gently pull until the tinsel slides just barely underneath my thread. Now I'm going to hold that in position as I do all of this again. I'm going to open up my thread, keep my tinsel to the side and start wrapping back. And every so often, I gotta take the twist out of my thread. Uh, big key here is even pressure the whole entire way. Uh, the reason I start the tensile up front is to help maintain a symmetrical underbody. It helps get rid of any lumps and bumps. So if you started your thread back here, or your, I'm sorry, if you started your tinsel back here towards the rear, uh, which a lot of people do, uh, the, only, the only downside to it is, is you've gonna, you're gonna have like a little bump there which can uh, wreak havoc on you if you're not good with floss, right? 
so this way, I just like having the, you know, it, having it go all the way to the front. We run it to the back, and it kind of alleviates that problem. And again, even tension. Keep your each wrap flat, even tension as you wrap this in. You'll see some people wrap, you know, this stuff super fast. They'll use 140. I've seen people use 280 thread as well. Uh, it builds up quicker for sure. It also causes problems much faster. So it's kind of a six one half dozen of another. So if you're, you know, if you if you're comfortable using 140. Use 140. If you're not you comfortable using 140 doing something like this, then uh, use 70 denier. Um, you do want a flat thread for this. Okay, so now we're coming to the end. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get right to where everything stops at the tail. We'll put one extra wrap in. The reason we put one extra wrap in is because we're going to wind forward. And so if you get, we want, we want this to be at a continuous taper or at the same dimension as it was previously. Everything needs to be even, always even. If it's an even taper, then it's an even taper, if that makes sense. So now we're going to to put two in right there. We came forward a little too close. Now, as I'm starting to wrap forward now, I'm going to start to increase my tension just a little bit. I can pick up some speed here. Just want to make sure you watch out for the lumps and bumps on uh, doing the fly this way. <clears throat> and seriously, like every time this time of year, it's like we get a rain, we've been dry, we, we get a rain, and then boom. Sneezing, eyes itching, all that good stuff. All right, and we're going to take this right back up to where we started. Cool. All right. Oh, get a little bit of a twist in the end there. Next, what we're going to get is we're going to get our floss. I've got about 30 inches of floss pulled here. I'm going to lift it up underneath my thread, put it on top. Pull the ends so that they are even. I'm doing this away from me because you can't see me doing it towards myself, which is a much more comfortable position. And once that floss is on top, I'm going to put one, two wraps over. Now I'm going to fold this floss in half. It should be caught in at this point so that it'll wrap. You'll see there's a little tiny gap there. Pull it to the back make one wrap over so it becomes one strand. Make a wrap forward away from the floss. Next, pulling your floss towards you, you're gonna run your floss together like this all the way through. And since you can't see me doing that, I demonstrated it away from you, but now I'm gonna go towards me. And now we're gonna start to wrap to the back. We're looking to have this floss slightly 
overlap one another as they lay. And we're going to continue this all the way down. We don't want to now the front part here, I should, I should stop and say it. The front part here, we don't want this floss to be too tight. And the reason is, is the tension that we're putting on the floss up front can make or break the difference in getting a completely uh, cylindrical body. So we want the front wraps to be a little looser as we work back also. If you're having a, a bit of an issue with lumps and bumps, just like we did on the last video, pull your floss to the bottom, loosen the tension with your hands, and take your bodkin or something and burnish the floss to help get it to lay flat. I'm not really running an issue here, but just wanted to give you a reminder uh, if you haven't watched the Marabou version. Of course, now I say that and Got a little bump there. So, as we're working into this taper, and it gets thicker towards the back, gently increase, gently increase the tension. And the reason we do that is so that we get tighter to the big part. We've been looser to the, the front part. And it should start to even out the body itself as you do this. When you get to the back, same thing we did with our thread, one full turn over. I know that looked like two, but it's actually just one full turn because like that first half turn coming in is just that, only a half turn. Now we can kind of open up our turns just a fuzz. And wrap back forward. All the way till we get to the front. And this video is all about patience. You know, a lot of people fast forward and all that. Some people hurry through it. Uh, this is trying to show you how to actually build a nice underbody. Okay, a little bump there. Get rid of that. There we go. And as you come back forward, loosen up your wraps again, and it should, you know, it should start to help even out. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, eventually, it can, but that takes a lot of practice. Uh, and you know, high-end material definitely helps. I'm just using some Raylon, uh, not silk. Uh, you know, quality materials can make the difference on stuff like this. Uh, Quality materials are also very expensive. So, and we're coming down the home stretch. Right up to the thread. When I get to my thread, I put that one turn over right behind. Right? And as I come behind on the second one, I pull it to the front. I lift it up. Bring my thread over the top. And now I've trapped it on top. I'll put one, two turns in, just gently pull down on my thread. Now I can trim that out. And I'm going to put another two, maybe three, just to secure all that down. There's a little bit of a 
lump there. Don't worry about that too much. Okay, so next, now that we have our body done, our tail done, we're going to move over to the rib. On the last one, we came, uh, what did we do? I forgot. We came up and over the top like this, I think. So in order to do this and get the, your mylar to bend correctly, what you want to do is you want to take it and you want to fold it forward so that it's aligned with the opposite side of the hook shank. Now at this point, you can come over the top and you, or you can come under the bottom. And that gold color in this case should be facing the bottom. I want to go the opposite direction of what I did last time. If you struggle with getting your wraps even, one thing you can do is you can take your bodkin after you get your first turn in. Okay, You're going to line your bodkin up with that first wrap so that the back side of your bodkin is on the front edge of your wrap. And you're going to line it just like that. You pull this up and over so that they line out, okay? Once you have that, your bodkin should go back in the middle, just like so. And you can make adjustments like this all the way. It's kind of like a little cheat if you're not used to trying to make nice ribs as you're going forward. So you can always use your bodkin as a cheat. Uh, typically we have about five to seven ribs going forward. If you, if your ribs start to open up and get bigger, you want them to get bigger towards the front, smaller towards the back, bigger towards the front. Otherwise you want to keep them even. Your fly could look kind of wonky compared to a lot of other flies anyway uh, that are of the same nature if it's the other way. What do I got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm going to get like nine or ten in here. Probably a little bit more than I normally would, but anyway, I got to yakking and not paying attention. Same thing. I'm going to come up behind my thread. I'm going to bring my mylar up and down and around to the front side. I'll cross it over so that my thread is attaching it from the top side like so and I'm going to trim this out and I forgot my white hackle uh, <clears throat> luckily I don't need that till the next step or two steps from now next what you need is you need another set of uh, uh, you need another feather right and so what we want to do here is typically this is tied in stem side first. Uh, if you get one of the longer ones and you don't have a, a short one, uh, you can pull some more off like this. You can line it up underneath and do this. That's totally fine. And tie that in. Uh, but traditionally, <clears throat> you're going to get a smaller feather and have the, the barbules that are coming off the side go about halfway to the back. So... When you, when you take your thumb, stroke all these out, you can kind of line these up to where you need them to be. Now, when you do this, also traditionally, the hackles uh, are doubled. And most people think, oh, the hackle's doubled, I need two. No, the hackle's just doubled. So I'm gonna tie this in on the side. I'm gonna work this forward just to fuzz. I'm gonna turn. Actually, I'm gonna lick everything. If you're not used to working with this, lick all of that so it sticks together. I'm going to pull it, turn it over. We fold everything to the back to lock it into place, get rid of the excess that we don't need. Now I can come in with my scissors and trim that out. So when you're doubling a hackle, you're going to take it, you're going to pinch it, and you're going to fold it over. Uh, there's numerous ways to do this, uh, but this is what it is. is doubling the hackle is folding it over so it lays just like you see where my thumb is and so when I pull this that doubled hackle should all lay to the back I need to do some more I didn't do enough and when you do this you need about um, one and a half to two turns something somewhere in there is enough 
You can also, if it's not one that goes straight back, pull straight up on your feather. I know you can't see that, but I'm pulling straight. Pinch. Oh, and I just broke it off. I was going to try to show you how to fold that over on the stem. Well, that didn't work out very well, did it? You can also save it. I'm going to tie this so that the barbules are facing in. I should have mentioned that before. I'm going to grab that, fold it over, lift up, cut those ones out. Shouldn't have pulled out. I just did. I tied it too shallow, I guess. Move my thread forward just a fuzz. There we go. Now. But you can take your stem as it's forward, take it and pull that hackle right out of your hands, or out of your fingers. So you lift up straight, pinch the hackle, pull, and it tends to want to go to the back. And you can do that on every turn if you need to. I'm just realign it. Okay. Now I've got about three turns in there. I'm going to come up again on the front side of the hackle with my thread. And cross my thread over that hackle. One, two turns. Pull down. Grab everything. Pull it to the back. And put a thread base down. I'm going to work that thread base going forward a little bit. So it starts to build the head. So I've got something about like that. Grab my scissors and trim this out. Now, this collar doesn't normally sit this way, so there's numerous ways to actually get this to come down below. Uh, you can take a, you can wet all this, and uh, you know, take your thumb, push it apart, pull it, so it's off the top and down below. Wet the hackle, and then put some kind of binding clip there so it sits like this. You can do that. You can also kind of just do the same maneuver, lick it, pull it back. Open up your thread so it's flat, and then when it's flat, you're gonna you're gonna jump it to the back. And when you do that, this is kind of technical, but you'll see that how it's sitting behind those stems. So you want it to sit right behind all the stem of that that you just set into place, just like so. I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull the hackle down with my left thumb, left index. I'm gonna lift up. And now it's in place, and now I can start to build the taper to my head. This is a quicker way to do it. Uh, it doesn't typically keep it down and direct and pretty, but it does keep it off the top, which is where we need it to be off of. So we're going to start to build the head here. <clears throat> I've got that too open. If your thread gets too open and starts to fan out like this, twist it the opposite direction. So I'm trying to keep the video time down here and still give you all the tips. Some of it you may just have to watch how I'm manipulating my fingers and whatever. So there you go. So you should be sitting something about like that. Again, you want to leave this clear off the top. And now with nice touching turns, I'm going to start to, now it's actually open, so they're not touching. It's all touching at this point. <laughs> There's kind of that fan that I was talking about. It opens up. Get down to a point. Get down there. Spin your thread up. Get it back into a rope. Uh, but anyway, you want to start to kind of build um, the taper to your head here. And you want to be careful that you don't add too much so that it slips down over the front of the eye there. We want to avoid that. So back and forth, back to the back, so on and so forth. All right, next comes the next part. And I goofed because I didn't grab my hackle that I needed. OK, 
Okay. Sorry, I should have done that. I even went through my checklist and somehow I... That part escaped me. So next for the wing, you need some white hackle. And I'm going to have to find some. I should have actually prepped this because I've done used up a bunch of it. And you want two per side that's going to come back just past the tail. And what can I find here? Hopefully you're catching up. If not, just skip forward a little bit until you see the white hackle come into play. Two there. I had two. I got one. Part of the, part of my problem is I've picked through all this stuff so darn much that there's not a lot left. Okay. So next I've got my hackle and what we're looking to do is have a total of four feathers that are you've got two coming like this on one side sitting to the back and then two on the opposite side and so again I apologize I should have had that ready and when we do this you want to line these up so that all the tips come together. This is not the way I normally do it. Uh, it's much more difficult this way. But all your tips are lined out. Normally I do it on the desk with all this feather sitting upright. So next, if you've got your tips together like this, okay, you've got all this mess down here. This mess is going to really screw you up. So what you need to do is just come in and get a general idea of how long this needs to be. That's about right. So my thumb's the mark. Now I can come in and I can trim all this geef out and so I have this. Now as my thumb is the mark, I can start to pull all this stuff off the stem. And I advise that you do this before you start <laughs> before you start the fly and have it all ready to go so you don't have to do that. So now I can kind of grab the stems and put everything together so that the feathers are sitting like this. You want the concave side of the feathers facing one another, which means you want the, the curvature of the feather facing one another. So when I have that, I'm going to line this up. Whoop, it rolled on me. Don't roll on me. Too far along for that. I'm going to line this up so that my hackle is right where I want it. Also, one thing you can do is you can come on the bottom side and strip out some of your hackle so it looks like this and it's kind of got this little arch to it now what that's going to do is is when you tie this in here it's going to help seat your hackle and let it ride along the top of that stem another thing you can do too is you can take this hackle you can dunk it in water you can pull it together like this, because that's the way it's going to be when it's in water, right? You can set it down right on top. We're going to put our first wrap in loose, second wrap in loose. We're going to move our thread forward. One. One turn. And it should be sitting. Let me adjust my camera there. About like that. Right on top. Once you have that pinch, everything in place and we're going to start to wrap our thread forward touching turns until I get about halfway through right here then I'm going to come in with my scissors or fingernail clippers is what I use often 
and I'm going to trim this out so these are just trimmed just behind the eye. We continue to wrap down. You may want to slide on you like that. If you get down to the front, you, if your thread's open, spin it up, make it a rope, start working back. Jump that thread a little bit just to cover it up. Now with tight turns, tighten it all down. The flatter you have your thread here, the nicer the head's going to be. There's no doubt. Uh, you can kind of cheat this with things like UV resin, glues, lacquer, so on and so forth. If you want a really nice head that's all of your thread work, your thread needs to be open to do that. And I've got some white crap on there. There we go. So it's not too bad. Oh no, my rib moved. See all this nice work that you put into it and then your rib moves. What a bummer. It happens. Don't let it get to you too much anyway. Put my whip finishes in. Pull it tight. So that's how it's going to look when it's wet and in the water. I'm just going to grab some Solares, place a dab on top, work it around with my bodkin. Make sure all the threads covered evenly. Uh, this will get rid of your lumps and bumps and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to have a perfect uh, thread finished head on these. You can. They're difficult to do. They take time. Uh, and hopefully you don't get a bunch of crap in the way. <laughs> like cameras and lights and all that good stuff. Because it does make a difference when this stuff is in your way. I know I complain about that a lot, but it's like, I'm not really complaining, I'm just saying. It's much easier to maneuver your arms and so forth when that stuff is not in your way. I think that's why you see a lot of people put the camera on the opposite side. That's okay. Turn this slow, get that to move around where I want it, I'm going to do a one and done shot with my UV on this one. There we go, that's pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and blast it. I have my tail pretty long on this one. And I turned my... Oh, I wasn't paying attention. My curvature is upside down. You can actually fix that. I guess since we've gone this far, let me show you how to fix it. Once you're done and your head's glued, take this, dunk the whole thing in water, and curve it. that. That'll fix any mishap that you have with your feather or feathers. Just like that. Now don't wring this out to dry or anything. Just let it dry overnight. It'll build the stature of the fly. And uh, yeah. So 
Anyway, I hope you found some things on that video informative. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can always check us out over at uh, Fly Tying for Beginners over at Facebook. Answer the questions, uh, the four questions. That's your golden ticket in. We do all kinds of fun stuff over there. And uh, happy tying, everybody. We'll see you later.